Folks for OS Reviews, you're watching our video first look and a quick review of the Cube iPlay 8. This is an ultra budget, low cost Android tablet that retails for as low as 50 bucks on the base model, which comes with 1 gig of RAM and 8 gigs of storage. There's a slightly more expensive uh, version that sells for $60, so $10 more, that gives you uh, double the memory at 16 gigabytes built in. So the tablet itself, uh, other than being very low cost, has an interesting aspect ratio. It's similar to something like an iPad mini, which I think is perfect for web browsing as well as consuming online content because it's closer to 4x3 uh, versus the more typical 16x9. That gives you a more stretched overall display that's good for watching videos, but not as good for browsing the web and reading books. Um, otherwise, again, it looks a lot, lot like the iPad mini on the front from the white kind of bezels being used to the fact that it's relatively slim and portable, so it definitely seems a lot more expensive than the price would suggest. We do have access to a 7.85 inch IPS display, so it gets pretty close to 8 inches, and the top has a VGA quality camera. Otherwise, on the edges, there's access to a micro SD card slot for expanding the built-in memory. The top houses a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a micro USB port for charging, and there's also a mini HDMI port for connecting to an external display. The other right-hand edge houses a dedicated power switch, a volume rocker, and these keys are made out of plastic, but they feel reasonably tactile. And the back here houses a 2 megapixel camera for capturing quick uh, images or emergency videos. And that's basically it. There is some branding by the company, all in Chinese, and the bottom here also features the iPlay 8 logo in addition to the mono speaker. The back here, it looks like aluminum, but it is in fact made out of plastic. The tablet as a whole actually feels reasonably well put together, but it's definitely not as premium as something that's all metal or you know unibody and built out of aluminum. But overall, it remains again fairly solid and doesn't creak or cringe on the edges, and that's uh, already pretty good considering the super low price point that they're aiming at. Other uh, elements of the tablet are also again entry level. There's access to a uh, quad-core processor powered by MediaTek in addition to, um, again, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all the wireless essentials, it does have wireless dual band, so 2.4G and 5G wireless, so that at least is a plus, again, on a low-cost device. So you can see that the overall uh, system itself um, you know, looks fairly stock, and that's because there isn't too much customization going on from the manufacturer. Thankfully, you do have access to the full, regular kind of uh, app drawer, as opposed to you know many Chinese phones, which tends to go for a more customized uh, launcher by default. So as a result, you have a pretty clean install of Android for you to customize by yourself and install the things that you would want. There's access to the essentials, including the full Play Store, in addition to Gmail, utility tools like the calculator, camera, email, and there's even an FM radio built on in, but you do need to use the headphones as the wireless antenna. You can see that the accelerometer is actually pretty swift and smooth, and there's no real problems there. So going back into the uh, kind of display here, we are at full brightness, and you can see that the display quality is good, but it's definitely not as bright as more expensive tablets on the market. Um, and that means that if you do have a lot of light in the background, if you are using this outdoors, it's going to struggle a little bit more. But as long as you're indoors uh, and there's moderate lighting, you'll be fine for reading back uh, images, text, and watching videos. The bezels are also respectable, so it makes the tablet still easy to hold when you're playing back games or browsing the web. And since it is made out of plastic, it is also quite lightweight, so you can use it for hours without noticing too much strain. When it comes to battery life endurance, uh, this thing will get fully charged in roughly three hours, and it will last you for about a day and a half to two days of heavy use before you need to recharge it again. So battery life also seems to be quite respectable. Um, the only real kind of downside of the specific model is going to be the RAM. At one gigabytes, it's a little low, and that means if you are multitasking, opening up too many tabs in the browser, then you know that's an area where the sluggishness uh, you know, will be a bit more apparent. Otherwise, we can see that, again, there's access to the standard drag-down notification shade for turning on your wireless option for GPS services, location services, and Maricast. Let's check out the web browsing experience first, and there's access to the standard browser on board, which gives you tab browsing. I still prefer Chrome, but uh, it doesn't seem to be built right on in with this particular unit. You can see that for basic web search, 
which is actually is really snappy and responsive. Wi-Fi signal is really strong, again, with that dual band wireless, and there's no problems at all in terms of connectivity in my options. The screen itself is also quite sensitive. Um, it's fairly lucid and responsive, and it supports five-finger multi-touch, so there are no real problems in terms of input and gliding along through different pages. You do also have virtual keys on the bottom for capturing a screenshot, adjusting the volume, going back home, and opening up the multitasking of various apps and programs. So let's try and load up the New York Times and see how it handles this page. Uh, and by default, we'll see that it actually loads up the full desktop site and not the mobile site. Uh, the New York Times is one of my favorite benchmarks to use as a complex web page that has lots of videos, ads, and scrolling elements, which is a nightmare for you know, usually low power devices to handle. But you can see on here, it actually does a respectable job. Sure, it's not gonna be quite as fast as a Snapdragon you know, 800 series chipset in terms of loading times, but once everything is loaded, there's actually a pretty decent overall responsiveness. And you can see that text is definitely legible. Speaking of, the screen on here has, again, pretty good viewing angles because it's using IPS technology, uh, although it is a 720p panel as opposed to full 1080p. Uh, to be perfectly honest, the difference isn't really dramatic, especially for regular day-to-day -day use. Um, you know, really high-res display is good in terms of watching videos for using for VR, but you're not going to really be doing that on a tablet, um, and it does drain the battery a bit more. So on a budget device, I think it's perfectly acceptable, and there are no real complaints as far as the overall screen uh, sensitivity in addition to the resolution. So web browsing works fairly well. Um, it will get a little bit more choppy in terms of its animations if you are running lots of apps in the background which are demanding, such as a game in addition to multiple tabs. But as long as you keep things light and you manage those resources by closing up uh, background apps as long as uh, it's within two or three, then complex sites will load up without any problems at all. So no real issues from web browsing uh, perspective. And again, it is a quite a joy to use, especially on this four by three aspect ratio. It looks like the entire web page is being held in your hands. Uh, almost like a newspaper that's been shrunken down, which I personally think is really enjoyable. From there, we also saw the built-in keyboard, which is using just a stock kind of Android 6.0 Marshmallow layout. It's quite sensitive and it's easy to use and features auto-correction, so there are no real problems either from typing in messages. There is a built-in microphone, of course, for video chatting in addition to using for voice searches, so that works quite well too. Discussing the camera quality a little bit more, this is probably, again, one of the weaker areas of this tablet. Not that you'll be taking too many images with tablets to begin with, but uh, again, at uh, two megapixels, it's definitely not super high. Um, and uh, overall, again, this is something that should be used more for emergency situations rather than as, of course, a primary camera. But I can tap on an image and of course I can capture it. Uh, there isn't any kind of image stabilization, which means that if you have shaky hands, if the lighting, lighting conditions are low, it's gonna struggle a bit more. However, you do have quite a few modes to play around with. It's a standard layout, so you can change things like beauty mode, panoramic modes, I can change the resolution, object tracking, HDR mode, smile detection, things like that. Taking a look at some of these sample images that I took, um, you can see that uh, it actually processes the images quite well, so even though it looks you know, very average on the viewfinder a moment ago, the actual result seems to be a little bit better. Still, there's not a huge amount of detail if you zoom all the way in, but at least colors seem to be quite neutral and accurate looking. And surprisingly, it's, you know, not a bad camera for the price. So, you know, it isn't perfect, of course, but uh, also not bad considering the low megapixel count. All right, so doing a quick sample with the speakers, you can see that uh, you know, it does play back and produce a good amount of volume, but the sound quality is for sure uh, on the tinnier side. It's not very bass heavy at all, and it's a rather thin sound, so it's not in any means an outstanding speaker, uh, which is why I would really recommend plugging in your own headphones. The headphone port does a good job of outputting sound in my testing without any static, and you can use, again, over-the-ear style headphones or just smaller earbuds. Of course, you can also opt for Bluetooth, and that works nicely too. So sound quality, it does have a speaker, but it's definitely not the strength of this particular unit. Um, otherwise, if you can see between the transitions, it also seems you know, not too bad. It seems relatively snappy. Um, I think that MediaTek is actually doing a good job in terms of optimizing the experience to run well on a relatively low-end chipset. Um, this is a bit of a contrast to Rockchip, which is 
definitely newer to Android devices, and as a result, animations seem a lot more choppy on rock chip based devices from my testing. So MediaTek, pretty good, considering again the low cost of the unit. Otherwise, if we go into settings, you know, kind of going back down, we can see that indeed it is running on Android 6.0 Marshmallow, so it's not you know, the most up-to-date version, but it's not bad either, and of course all the games and programs that you would want to install can be fully run on this thing without too many issues. When it comes to intensive gameplay, it definitely struggles a little bit more in terms of frame rates, and you do have to wait for some potential delays, um, but to overall, you know, everything will fully load and run as long as, again, you are a bit more uh, careful with your resource management, closing up a lot of background apps that you don't need uh, just to make sure that things will still load relatively smoothly. So that's pretty much it as far as the Cube iPlay 8 is concerned. This was kind of our more in-depth look and our hands-on review of this unit. In general, I would say that this is a great value tablet. At $50, it rivals other low-end options like Amazon Fire tablets, but those have a much more traditional aspect ratio. They also look and feel a little bit cheaper from my uh, impressions. In addition, it's very heavy on its uh, Amazon integration, so it's really pushing you to purchase Amazon tools. So if you're not already subscribed to their services and you have a Prime account, um, then it doesn't make as much sense because it's more of a device that's uh, you know used for the Amazon ecosystem. If you are someone who uh, doesn't want to take part in that or doesn't have a subscription, then something like this, which gives you a more vanilla build of Android, will make much more sense. Furthermore, it has a better display in my opinion, and overall performance is quite similar as well for your regular basic tasks, including web browsing, uh, taking occasional images, as well as doing some very light gaming. So you can check out more details about this in our official written review, but for now this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews, this has been the Cube iPlay 8.